don't you say that those who have been killed in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are dead? No, rather they're alive, but you don't perceive it. You don't see it. You know, when Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu was martyred in the Battle of Uhud, <clears throat> his chest was ripped open, his liver was chewed, his body was mutilated. What we see is a ghastly, horrifying, terrifying sight. That is what we see. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that those who have been killed in the battle, they're not dead, rather they're alive, but you don't perceive it. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw something else. Looking at the body of Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu, even though he showed his anger, he was a human being. He showed his sadness. These two emotions we all are sharing and feeling today of what is going on in Gaza. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw something else. He saw the body of Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu after expressing his anger and sadness and anguish. He saw the body of Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Prophet of Allah, Hamza tu asadullahi wa asadu rasuli. We have written the name of Hamza as the Lion of Allah and His Prophet on the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's cousin brother Jafar bin Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who used to resemble in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a lot physically. If you'd stand a couple of hundred feet away, people would mistake him for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> when he was killed, murdered in the Battle of Muta, both his hands were chopped off because he was holding the flag of Islam. Both his hands were chopped off. There were 72 wounds just in the front of his body. To us, it's a horrifying, terrifying sight. But Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw something else. He saw that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has put two wings on the hands of Jafar bin Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he's flying all over paradise, eating the foods of paradise, and drinking the water from the rivers of paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then revealed the verses, the verses continue. And again, these verses fit exactly today to our brothers and sisters and children in Gaza. Allah will surely test you. Allah will test you with a little bit of fear, hunger, loss in your wealth, loss in your lives of your relatives and loss in your own lives and loss in the fruits of your labor, all the hard work you have done. وَبَشِّرِ sabirin. But give glad tidings, congratulate those who are patient. Who are these patient people, O Allah? Alladina Ida Asabatum Musiba, Alu inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. That whenever any affliction or calamity, trial, tribulation comes their way, they say we are here from Allah, we're returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The situation of a believer is a wonderful one, said Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The situation of a believer is a wonderful one. When any trial, calamity, affliction comes his way, he's patient and this is good for him, said Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's patient and whenever anything good happens to him, he is thankful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and this is also good for him and this is exclusively for the believers at Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at the Iman of the children, of the fathers, of the mothers in Palestine, respected listeners. 
What a miracle of Iman, Allahu Akbar. What acceptance of the decree of Allah. What acceptance of the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they know, and we are seeing with our eyes, they know exactly what Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala was told just at the beginning of the Battle of Muta. This was the first expedition of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And when he saw massive army in front of him of Eastern Roman Empire and the Ghassanid Arab satellites, tens and thousands of them, like ants, filling up the horizon, he was shivering with fear. Next to him was a Badri Sahabi who had participated in the Battle of Badr. He said, Ya Abu Huraira, if you were with us in the Battle of Badr, you wouldn't be shivering like this. Because Allah's help doesn't come with the numbers. Allah's help comes with taqwa, with piety and righteousness. Ula'ika alayhim salawatu min rabbihim wa rahma wa ula'ika humul muhtadun. Then Allah continues that these are the ones on whom Allah sends his mercy, his blessings, and these are the ones who are rightly guided. These are the ones who are rightly guided. Allah. Win-win situation of believers, respected listeners. Riding on two wheels, a wheel of patience and a wheel of gratefulness to Allah, going, cruising along all the way into Jannah al Firdaus. That rubble, that bombings that are going on, on the schools and the hospitals, those innocent children, buried under the rubble. Some of them, they're able to take them out. But some of them, that rubble has become their graves. But more sadder than this, respected listeners, even more sadder and tragic than this for the entire world, along with the burying of the children, innocent children in the rubble, the entire world is seeing the burying of the Western values under the rubble. The Western values we came to the Western countries, looking at their compassion, kindness, human ethics and values, international law of peace, Freedom of speech, freedom of protests. What has happened to that? What hypocrisy? The world is watching, the world is bearing witness that what was portrayed, what we were deceived, was just a show off, it was just a propaganda. And when I say this, I'm not talking about every Western person living in the Western countries, because majority of them are truthful, honest, compassionate, and kind people. I'm talking about the political elite and the corruption on the powers of the chairs they're sitting on. Are these innocent children buried under the rubble are lesser than human beings? Are these not human beings? What crime did they commit? Be bin qutilat. And Allah will ask a child for what crime we were killed in this world. What do we do, respected listeners? With all the grief and the sadness and the pain. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan 
وَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ الْأَجْزِ وَالْكَسْلِ O oh Allah, I seek your protection from anxiety and grief. The dua of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he taught all of this. I seek your protection from anxiety and grief. And I seek your protection from incompetence and laziness. Because depression, anxiety and grief can put a person in depression and he will become incompetent and lazy. He will be just lying on the bed. It's a chain. O oh Allah, I seek your protection from anxiety and grief. May Allah save them from anxiety and grief, respected listeners. Not only Muslims, non-Muslims, let them be Jewish people, Muslim people, anyone who is under oppression, who have been taken hostages, innocent people. Allah doesn't like this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was furious. At Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he had just become a Muslim, and in his first battle, he was about to kill a person and he said, La ilaha illallah, that person. And Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu killed him anyway. The Sahaba came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Oh Prophet of Allah, he killed him even though he read the kalima. Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu said, Oh Prophet of Allah, he just said it to show, to save himself, to protect himself. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became furious at Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu. He said, do you know, have you seen his heart? Do you know what was inside his heart? Did you see that with your eyes to kill him like that? Somebody killed a bird, a bird. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was angry. Why did you kill that bird for no reason? Kids burn ants on the ground playing. Rasulullah became furious. Why did you burn those ants? Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, in tataqu Allah yaj'al lakum furqana wa yukaffir ankum sayyi'atikum wa yaghfir lakum wallahu dhul fazli al-azim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an a jolting verse, respected listeners. Qur'an Allahu Akbar, may Allah guide me. May Allah give me tawfiq and to all of us. Qur'an is such a book you read, you will lose your sleep. If you're sleeping, it will wake you up from sleep. Allah has kept that power. that effect in the Qur'an. Allah says, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah, and Allah will give you a position of distinction and honor. Allah will give you a position of distinction and honor. Today living in America, respected listeners, all of us, any Muslim living in a Western country, We need to get this into our lives. Fear of Allah, not literally, oh, I'm afraid, I'm scared of Allah. Of course, we all are. But the fear of Allah, not in literal sense, but the fear of Allah in your beliefs and actions, in your aims and objectives, in your morals and behavior, in your dealings with the people. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Fear of Allah in our belief and objectives and aims and morals and behavior and our dealings with the people. When we have this, then Allah will bless us with that furqan, with position of distinction and honor. And the world is thirsty to look at this, respected listeners. Allah has sent us here. to be a mercy and blessing to this country. Wherever Muslim is in any country, he should be a mercy and a blessing to the people around him. That he's compassionate not just to his children, but to other, other children as well. That he does, not, he does not show that he's a godly person inside the masjid, but he shows it outside the streets too in the marketplaces, at workplaces, and his, in his home. A Muslim respected listeners, when others falter, 
a Muslim remains balanced. When others weaken, a Muslim remains strong. When others go astray, a Muslim remains on the straight path. When others sell their conscience to wealth and power and money, a Muslim remains firm. Nothing moves a Muslim respected listeners. No power, no wealth, no political party can move a Muslim. Not even a hurricane can move him. He takes, he shows, he has these values, walks with dignity. He has feelings and compassion for other people. Few people like this, respected listeners, came into a country, walked in few places, communities, the entire community, entire countries came into the fold of Islam, just few people. You can count on fingers, maybe families, maybe few individuals, maybe one individual, Moinuddin Chishti Rahmatullah in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh region. One man, millions came into the fold of Islam because he walked with these qualities. Look at today, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, Philippine, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, Spain, all of these countries still live an Islamic way of life, except Spain. What happened in Spain? People were living like us, praying Salat, coming to Masjid, fasting in the month of Ramadan, working, taking care of their families. But the mistake they made, which we all should avoid, it's a lesson for us because history does repeat respected listeners. They remain amongst themselves. They did not give the beautiful qualities of Islam to the native Spaniards. When the fire of racism and the propaganda like it is going on now from the media and the elite of the power folks, when the fire of racism and nationalism and sectarianism erupted in Spain, it took all the Muslims like a morsel of bite. They had great scholars among them. Ibn Hazm, Qurtubi, Shatbi, Sheikh Akbar, Rahimahumullah. Nothing saved them. Masjid al Qurtuba, one of the most beautiful masjids on the planet Earth, even today is thirsty to hear the words of the Adhan. If we do not prove ourselves as a blessing and mercy to this country, respected listeners, that the natives should come and say, these are good people. These are hardworking people. They take, they take tough projects at work, in communities, in the neighborhoods, like Yusuf salam took and Allah put him on the throne of Egypt. These people should come and guarantee, will come and guarantee that these are Media respected listeners, the propaganda in the media will have no effect. Cannot brainwash people, cannot manipulate the minds of the people if we stand up with the truth and the beauty of Islam. Complete, beautiful religion Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. When we stand up, on these things, respected listeners, the character, the compassion, the kindness, the concern for them, the destructive path they have taken, they will be the first ones to protect us, that nobody is going to harm these people. These are good people. These are honest people. These are people with integrity and truthfulness and sincerity. These are a blessing and mercy to us, to around us. Shaitan worshipped for hundreds and thousands of years in paradise. 
But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to bow down to Adam alayhi salam, he showed his true character. That arrogance, that anger, that jealousy kicked him out of paradise. We have to inculcate and manifest this character, respected listeners. Then insha'Allah, Allah will give us strength. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us honor and distinction. And no matter what propaganda the media is playing, no matter how much brainwashing they're trying to do, nothing will impact because this will have an effect on the people around us. This will attract people towards us. When I mean towards us, not towards us, but towards the beautiful sifat and the qualities of Islam and truthfulness. Like a magnet attracts a lifeless piece of iron, why can't a human being with these beautiful qualities attract another human being, respected listeners? A Muslim with these qualities is more powerful than the most powerful magnet on the face of the earth. But somehow that magnetism is not there inside us. The power is not there. We have to generate that power. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was salat was salam ala rasuli il karim amma bad. With all that is going on, respected listeners, to in Palestine, in Gaza, and to Muslims and non Muslims, anyone who's going through under going through oppression and dhulm, we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve them of this oppression. The least we can do, respected listeners, for our brothers and sisters and children in Palestine, the least we can do, other than the concern and the pain and the anguish, all of us from today onwards, inshallah, some of you may already be doing this and more, pray to rakat salat, respected listeners, for those people. Pray to rakat salat, after salat, go in sajdas, prostration, and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, take the affliction and grief and calamity and trials and tribulations away from them, O oh Allah. We can't do anything, O oh Allah, we're making dua to Allah, to you, O oh Allah. Hassan Basri rahmatullahi would say that the winter days and nights are a blessing for a believer. Days are short, he can fast, she can fast. Nights are long, they can worship Allah more. In the last portion of the night, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah's throne comes closest to the earth. And Allah asks, is anyone who wants to make any dua, I will accept their dua, their prayers. Anyone who has any wishes, ask me, I will grant those wishes. Anyone who seeks forgiveness, ask me and I will forgive you. Nights are long, before Fajr, we take out few minutes to make dua for them, to pray for them. At least on the day of judgment, you know, like that bird, it is true or not, but it has a lesson for all of us. That bird who went to throw a couple of drops of water, every trip it would go on the humongous, tremendous fire they had lit for Ibrahim salam and thrown Ibrahim salam into the fire. The bird would go up above the fire because it was very strong, powerful fire, go way above the fire, drop a few drops and then come back. Take a few more drops, drop, come back. The other birds ask, why are you doing this? What benefit is it? Few drops on this tremendous, humongous fire. The birds say, I know it's not going to help much, but I can tell Allah that, oh Allah, on your khalil, your friend Ibrahim, oh Allah, I did something for him, oh Allah, whatever was in my capacity, oh Allah. Like that old poor woman who was yearning a ball of thread, took that ball of thread to buy Yusuf alayhi salam in the slave markets of Egypt where the kings and the ministers and the princes and the princesses came to bid for Yusuf alayhi salam. They said, why are you going there when there are kings and princes coming to buy him? She said, yes, I'm not, be, I'm not gonna be able to afford him, but on the day of judgment when Allah will call the bidders of Yusuf, my name will be among the bidders of Yusuf also. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of the brothers and sisters in Palestine and everyone 
our Jewish human brothers and sisters in Islam, Muslims, non-Muslims, Hindus, atheists, everyone is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves every human being more than 70 mothers combined. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the straight path. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it life easy for, for our brothers and sisters in Palestine and children in Palestine. Allah give them strength. Allah give them will to live and survive. Allah give them patience. Allah give them will to accept the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatun fil akhirati hasanatun khin adhab al-nar. Rabbana la tazi qulubana ba'da idha dhaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma. Inna ka anta al-wahab. Ibadallah. Inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsan. Wa ita idhi al-qurba. Wa yanhani al-fahishai wa al-munkari wa al-baghi. Ya'idhukum la'alakum tadhakkaroon. Fathkuruni athkurkum. Wa shkururi wa la tadhakkaroon. Wa akhimi salam.